So there you are working on an app and you set out to add a button to the current page. You plop down your button and start thinking about the parameters you'll need to pass to ensure it looks just right. If the date of this coding exercise was a year or two ago, you might have written code like this. The button was called material button or flat button and the parameters looked like this. Color, disabled color, focus color, and highlight color. Four parameters for one attribute, depending on its interactive state. And we still haven't even gotten to text color or border color, each of which will require their own armada of parameters. And as awkward as this is, we still haven't even reached the worst part. To say nothing of the fact that this problem was not limited to these three attributes, or even to buttons, how could Flutter know what you want if an element was both focused and hovered? Sadly, it couldn't. It just had to guess. So not only have you supplied 12 color parameters, you haven't even been able to specify exactly what you want. Are we having fun yet? Okay, so this won't do, but luckily this entire hypothetical lives deep in the past, and it's current year now. The solution first quietly arrived in Flutter as early as version 1.20, but it wasn't implemented everywhere. What might a potential solution look like? One of the gaps we've identified is that unique combinations of these states present ambiguity. So you might think, okay, we've already written 12 parameters. What's a few more? What about hovered and focused color? Sadly, that idea will only take us further in the wrong direction. Instead of expanding our power by adding more parameters, we want to somehow expand it by removing parameters. The solution the material team came up with was to no longer accept a static value for something like background color, but instead to accept a function that returns a color. But before we can fully understand that function, we have to take a quick detour into the land of what Flutter calls material states. What's this, you ask? A material state is one of the various interactive states that the material design language recognizes. The set includes obvious states like hovered, pressed, focused, and disabled, and other less obvious ones like scrolled under, which was introduced in Material 3. In Flutter, these are implemented as a simple enum that you can look at yourself in the material underscore state dot dart file. Okay, so you're now familiar with material states, which means you're ready to tackle those functions I mentioned earlier, because you guessed it, they are past the set of currently active material states. Let's look at some code. A function that resolves these material states might look like this. It accepts a set of material states and it returns a nullable color. This makes sense. If the element is focused, it returns the focus color. If the element is hovered, it returns the hovered color. And this hypothetical app has decided that these are the only two interesting states. So if neither are true, it falls back to the default. But what if you wanna have a special color for focused and hovered? Before, you would have been out of luck. But our function can handle that. That's pretty good, but I will admit it's kind of a lot of code to write. Of course, if you need all of this juggling, then there's no way around it. The alternative is that Flutter has to guess what you want, which is not what you want. But what if you have a more straightforward situation? What if you just want your button to be blue and you don't care about anything else? Well, technically that function could look like this. It's not terrible, but it's a lot more to type than just colors.blue, which is what we used to type. To find out how this API collides with real world widgets, let's return to some material components and take a peek at their parameters. To start, let's look at text button, one of the new age buttons in Flutter. Text button takes an optional style parameter, which is an instance of the button style class. And that button style class looks way more organized than it used to. Now for something like background color, it just takes a single parameter called background color. Great. But what's the type of that parameter? It's a nullable material state property of type nullable color, which is completely self-explanatory. No, it isn't. The first question is whether we can write something like this. And sadly, we cannot. It turns out that material state properties of a type do not subclass that type. The code Flutter wants us to write is this. This still feels excessive for a single value though, and luckily here we can use the following shorthand. That dot all method is handy when you just want a dead simple one-liner. But 
What if you don't want any of this and you long for the simpler days of old? Maybe your app will only ever target Android and iOS, so questions like hovered, focused, and pressed colors are not a concern. In that case, check out the styled from method on the new button classes. Start with a button and supply its style parameter from the text button dot style from static method, which returns a button style instance. And what does this method take? Simple old variables, not material state properties. Colors.blue has re-entered the chat. Now, this whole API wasn't added to make it harder to specify a single color. It was added to make it easier, actually possible at all, to disambiguate complex rules for when multiple material states are in play. This is the scenario that really makes good use of this new API. We've got that function we discussed earlier passed to our material state property. And this is how it might actually look too. This is a plausible snapshot from inside a build method. But if you're feeling itchy at the thought of defining this closure inside your build method, you're not alone. So let's take a look at some ways we might tighten this up. We know that whatever we pass to this parameter must be a material state property of the given type. So let's start by defining a class that is exactly that. I already like where this is going, but the possibility of needing to check with our theme suggests a build context. So let's add it. Now, I know we used the resolve with method earlier, but that's a shortcut for using a static version of the class. If we're going to instantiate our class, then the function we have to override is resolve. And what goes in this method? Of course, the same stuff we had before. And then back in our build method, simplicity is restored. Another detail to be aware of is a compatibility bridge that appears in several material widgets that wanted to support this new material state property functionality without fully doing away with simple arguments. The most common of these is called material state color, but there are several others. AppBar.backgroundColor is one such parameter of type material state color. Just know that whenever you see this, you can pass either a color or a fancy resolver. And one final tip to make your life easy, consider adding this extension to your code base to further tighten your code. Now, instead of writing if states.contains material state dot hovered a zillion times, you can just write if states dot is hovered still a zillion times. Hopefully this helps clarify some of the philosophy behind the new API and take some of the bite out of using it. For more info on Flutter, head to flutter.dev.